So, what's the saying? Uh, you can't keep a good man down. I don't know if you have noticed from my video in the airport the other night, but I look like I just climbed out of the grave. Um, it became apparent to me... I don't like that. It became apparent to me as I was boarding the plane that I was ill. I was sick. I had a scratchy throat. I had a headache. I was cold. I was sick. So, uh, knowing that we have this big sale coming up Friday, there was going to be some traveling. I was going to have to be sharp. And then, of course, I'm flying to New Zealand on Monday. I decided to take uh, Monday night off. Uh, a good night to take off. You know how much I hate driving in the mud anyway. Oh, I got my Lincoln James hat on. Uh, I hate driving in the mud anyway on, uh, on in, during the races. So, it was an easy thing to, uh, to take off. Monday night. Now, I wish James had had hard aid a little closer. I haven't talked to him yet. Maybe there was something going on. I have no idea. But wow, Buckingham race, some good. Anyway, we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about next year's uh, horses. So right now, uh, I sent out your videos this morning. Uh, feeling great now. I had a, almost, I slept for most of the day yesterday. Drank lots and lots of water. And um, um, feel much better now. So I finished looking at the sale about a month ago when I first got the sale catalog. I went through it and I marked out about 58 horses. We were potentially, we were potentially looking at um, a lot of nice horses in uh, in the Ohio Select Jug Sale catalog. Now last year it was two days. They took a beat in the second day, so they condensed it to one day. So these are some good horses, and they're going to go for some decent money. Um, I don't want to go through my top 10 list because there's a lot of people out there that are actually getting this and a lot of clients we have in Ohio. So I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you my top list. I've whittled it down to 29 horses. These will be in numerical order with no designation put towards 1 through 10. But I do have 10, a couple in particular, I really, really want to bid on. Uh, we had some a lot of luck in Ohio this year. We were the fifth uh, strongest stable in the staking program in Ohio and we did that with some horses that didn't cost a lot of money. Oso Pine was 13,000 I believe. Yes was 16. See you in Tuscany was 9500. Now West 52nd was 24,000 so he was our most pr our, our, our most expensive horse. Twinsburg 12,000. So we had a host of others. All were very frugally purchased if you will. So um as I said, I sent an email out a little while ago to a few people and I said, you know, uh, the reality of the situation is we can't spend no money every year and expect to come to Ohio and do well. We did very good this year. You can say it's luck, but we talk about luck at the stable from time to time and we all know or you should know by now what the definition of luck is and that is when preparation runs smack dab into opportunity. When proper preparation meets opportunity, that's the definition of luck. So, we, um, we'd like to have some nice horses in Ohio this year. To do that, to buy them out of the select sale, we're going to need some money to do so. I looked at the top 10 horses I picked, and I said to myself, I think we can buy six, seven, eight, eight of them for around a quarter of a million dollars. Maybe 300000 You might say that might be a little high. That's fine. I know the first horse I like on my list is going to push six figures. We don't have to buy the best horses. It would be nice to start with some nice horses to begin with. Now, when you're talking about value, if you run the table next year as a two-year-old, you're only looking for um, you know, what your two-year-olds are going to do. You run the table in Ohio you're going to make a, quite a bit south of, of a half a million, which I've been racing there three years. I've never seen anybody run run right through the entire program. So I looked and I said, do any of these horses remind me of Grand Circuit horses? One did, for sure. Made me think that um, he's some kind of good-looking horse. A couple other ones did also. So for me... I'm going to give you a little look, and, uh, and I went over and over and over this list. I poured over the videos again. I poured over the, the pedigrees again. Obviously, I'm sitting in my driveway. That's Amy behind us. 
doing something. Um, I'm going to run through the top 29 horses, and I'm going to break it down into seven trotting colts. Only seven. Seven trotting colts I really, really would like out of this sale. There's some other horses. There is a list of 58, and when I go to the sale, I'm going to look at all 58 on Thursday. But, um, but uh, I broke it down into 29 specifically. Uh, 29 horses I'd really, really like to take a look at. Seven trotting colts, 12 trotting fillies, four pacing colts, and six pacing fillies. These are horses that really caught my eye. Their pedigrees look good, and for the right price, they're affordable. Listen, we're not we're not going to uh, walk away from from a winning formula. You know, we're still going to purchase horses in the same way we did last year. But as I said in the email I sent a little while ago, evolution being what it is, the stable has turned into something much bigger also. We do have a place where people can, can buy into horses from all different budgets. But we also have a lot of clients are saying, listen, we had a lot of luck, we had a lot of fun, but we'd like to buy some good horses. So those of you out there that are wondering um, what types of horses we're looking at, we're going to get right to the list right now. First on the list, the first horse is a pacing colt, and he comes in at number 21. Number 21 is a Rockin' Amadeus colt out of Hickory Lane Farm. Rockin', uh, what's this here, Rock? Rockin' the After Party. Rockin' the After Party. I like this video. His pedigree's decent. Uh, two living foals. Both of them are winners. One in 55. Uh... Looks like both of them are 55 from what I can see. Anyway, um, good looking Colts. Looks like he's correct. Again, I, I went back and looked again at uh, I went back and looked again at my video from the Goshen sale and a couple of horses said, oh, this is a big horse. And then I get to the sale and he's a midget. So from what I can see, a little disclaimer, from what I can see on the video, this is a big good looking horse. Now, obviously, this is why it's so important to get to the sale and inspect them. We are going to be doing a lot of things on sale day. A lot of things driven through the app, through the site. So I've said it again and again, and I'll say it again. Download the app, the stable app. And what we're going to do is try and put some videos on there of these horses. I'm going to go and inspect them. Do some live, uh, some live videos and some catalog videos so people can get a look at what we're looking at, why we like them, and what we see about them. Now, I have people again, and people say, why do you do that? Why would you possibly tell the people, the 1,300 people that are going to receive this video, what horses you're looking at? Why wouldn't I? If you're out there, and you see that I like a horse that you like, would you not rather partner with the stable.ca? And even if you don't, even if you want to go and see what we're looking at, or maybe you missed it, now you've decided you want to buy that horse. We have a hard line. I said this to somebody the other day. If the breeder of this horse walked up with a Lee Chank horse in hand and said, Anthony, if you give me a check for X, you can walk away with this horse right now. If that number was right on or below what we think that horse was worth, I'd be happy to. But I'm not going to pay a dollar more. Now, I lied. Last year, I went over one horse. One horse I went over on. And uh, I didn't the other day. I actually refused to buy a horse, even though I liked him for under what I had him pegged at, just because it was gonna be a tough sell. It was gonna be a tough sell, I liked the horse. He was at 21,000, I told everybody I liked him at 22. I really liked him at 22. He was at 21 and I let him go. It just happened. But then again, last year I bought West 52nd for $2,000 more than I said I would. But for the most part, the stable.ca has hard lines. Hard financial lines in the sand if I think that number 21 is worth X and he brings $1 more than X, we probably aren't going to bid on him. So, if you're out there and you're saying, well, you know, Anthony, I like number 21. All right, well, shoot me an email. I'll tell you what I think he's worth and what I'd be comfortable paying for Rockin' the After Party. Number 21, a Rockin' Amadeus Colt from Hickory Lane Firms. Second horse I like, two stalls over. Number 23. This is, you're going to laugh. And this, I don't even know how this horse made the top whatever list, at my 29. This horse had a nice video, had a great family. I know a number of horses that have raced into this family. And it's a Panderosa. Now, 
I don't even know if I've ever had a Pandora. Can you imagine that? Now, the, ima the amount of years Pandoros has been breeding. I've driven plenty of them. Don't think I ever trained one. This is a mare that took America 152. 61 lifetime wins, the mother of this horse. Now, ninth foal, getting up there, but not too long in the tooth. Cam's Van Gogh, 150 and four, half a million made by Real Artist. Cam's Macarena, 53 and one. I am not going to announce the, the BT, best time, before time, whatever the hell that is. BT, I'm not announcing that. That's garbage and it shouldn't be in the sales catalogs. Cam's Macarena, 53 and one, a quarter of a million dollars made. This was a Mach 3 horse that I'd raced against quite a few times. Now, another real artist made 194. And then there's another real artist made 171. An artificial that made 100. A modern art, terrible sire, 56. Another real artist, they went back again to real artist, only made 17. Then a grin from ear to ear made 1,000. Now you look at the second dam, the first dam, Cam's Valentine, half a million, or 384,000 made. Some other nice horses in there. Just a decent family. And this horse has a nice video, comes from a, a smaller breeding operation in Mervyn Raber Farms. So for me, for the right price, and I believe this would fall under V for value, number 23, a Pandorosa Philly with a nice video and a decent page. Her name is Time Sensitive. You have to wait a little while. Go get a hot dog because you're going all the way over to number 50. Number 50 is our first Uncle Peter. I have to really uh, stop myself when I look at some of these horses because I remember how good their videos looked. And, uh, and I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Number 50, 50 is a Bay Philly from Winterwood Farms. Her name is Peter's Gliding Ace. It's a terrible name. Peter's Gliding Ace. This is um, from one previous foal, also an Uncle Peter, now racing it to, at time of catalog, no mark on Peter's Dream, which is the Uncle Peter sibling of this horse, second second dam. You'll see a lot, I, I told you before, there's some families, you'll see them pop up in every sale, everywhere. And this is one of them, the Soulful Delight, Like a Dream, Cross, Tom Ridge down in the third dam, so I didn't mind uh, the video and I like the breeding of number 50, Peter's Gliding Ace. Now I notice there are some horses that I have checked off in my catalog, but when I look at this more condensed list, they're not on here. One of them is the We Will See horse, they're right next door at a Driving Miss Rudy. Why do we like that horse? One of the first horses to put the stable.ca on the map. Bourbon and Barley is the sister to this We Will See Philly. Although she did not make my 29 list, I have no idea why, but I am gonna go look at this horse when I get to the sale. Number 69 is what we have to jump over to next. Number 69. A Cash Hall Colt, Fox, or sorry, Fox Five. Rose Run Valiant from obviously the Rose Run, uh, the Rose, Runs, Rose Run Farm, Sugar Creek, Ohio. This right here is a half brother to a Iron Tough Colt called Catch the Dream and Sultan of Cash, both very, very good horses. Catch the Dream, 39 lifetime wins. Sultan of Cash, we raced against last year, nice horse. Deck down in the second dam is Getting Down and Dirty, who was a very, very nice horse. Paul McDonnell drove that horse, nice horse. And then way down in the third, you also have Royal Ballot and Baltic Ballot. These are, this is some good bloodlines right here. Now it's a Cash Hall, screams value. Well-bred horse, has a good video. A horse that we might be looking at right here in number 69, Rose Run Valiant. 10 more hips to number 79. Number 79, it's good to be bad. Now, I did not circle this horse to begin with. I don't know why. It's good to be bad is out of the Spring Haven consignment. It's an Uncle Peter Philly. Uh, oh, I know why. <laughs> I had the sister to this horse. She was mad. She was nasty. She was a nasty bugger. She didn't even make the sales catalog. She had speed, but she was crazy. And this is the Uncle Peter sister. But had a good video, and I really, really liked the horse. The filly might have been a little crazy and hot, but I actually really liked her. She had a good demeanor. She was just a little tough to deal with on the track. So that's number 79. Skip over a few pages to Sugar Valley Farms consignment of number 82. Yankee Cruiser filly Condoleezza. She's a Bay filly. 
Now this is a sister to Zoe Ellison, and the second dam is a dam of Batter's Edge. Third dam is a dam of Cactus Creek. There's a lot of pedigree on this page, a lot of pedigree. Now, the two-year-old full brother or sister, why doesn't it say? Full brother or sister has not raced yet, but the video of this horse is nice, and this also is a horse that I'm a little bit interested in. Two more pages to number 84. Number 84 is Leah's Little Sis. There's another horse that I did not circle here. This is a full count. I get shut out with all the full counts I tried to buy this year. They make nice looking horses. This is a full count filly. Now this filly's uh, sister or brother is named Count Me In. Count Me In was the trotting colt of the year in 2011 in Ohio. 31 wins, a mark of 153 and 400,000 made. Good day. There's also another one here, Countess Leah, who is a full sister, and, a, and that was the full brother, by the way. The full sister, Countess Leah, was the two-year-old filly of the year in 2012. This is a pretty good family, isn't it? Third dam, ooh, not that much. Fourth dam, not that much. First dam, very, very strong. Sorry, second and third dam. First dam is very, very strong. The full brother and full sister of this horse were both filly and colt of the year in 2011-2012 respectively. So this is an older bloodline, but at the same time, good looking horse with a strong page. This horse we're looking at also. Number 85, Steph's Dream from Double Spring Farm. This is a Philly, uh, Philly sister to cold certified Magical Steph. I was talking to the trainer of this horse today. The trainer of cold certified and Magical Steph. Very, very nice man, Gary Lance. He's very interested in this horse too. Um... I am interested in this filly also. This is a good looking filly. She had a good video. Really, really like what I saw from Steph's Dream. 88. Number 88 in your catalogs. Number 88. Come on now. Let's go 88. Number 88 is... What in the hell? Flo Fracas. Wow. Flo Fracas. Third dam is a dam of corn cob conch. Second dam's a little weak. The first dam is the dam of Allie's gift we raced against. I like this horse from LMN Bread Stables. It's an Uncle Peter filly. Philly that I rather like on her video. Page is okay. Here's a horse we could probably afford. I don't see this horse bringing a ton of money, but could bring enough that we would be interested in her. Two more pages to number 90. She's an Uncle Peter. Another Uncle Peter. Wowzers. Another Uncle Peter from Hickory Lane. Uncle... Peter, uh, Uptown Chick is the name of this filly from Hickory Lane Farms. Uh, first dam is not that tough. Second dam, couple of okay ones. Third dam, Yankee Douglas. Mediocre page, but a really, really nice video. Number 90 is a horse we also could look at. We have a lot of fillies in here. They might all be Uncle Peters. I have no idea. Make some good looking horses. 91 is on our list. This is a pacing colt. Jeweled Cruiser out of the Spring Haven consignment. This is a Yankee Cruiser Colt. First fall from Alexis, Alexis Jewel, by well said. The Alexis Jewel is a half-sister to the monster Rare Jewel. Rare Jewel was a very nice horse. Took a mark of 149, 1.339 million made by Art Escape, 60 wins. I watched this horse perform in Ontario and he was a beast. A couple other good horses, notable horses in the family. Rock and Roll Jewel, 49 and 1, made 380,000. Michelle's Gemstone, 149 and 4, made 230,000. And uh, the third dam, Mystical Shark, Mystical Shark, Caressa. Oh, Sedna. Oof. Anyway, this horse had a decent video. Questioned his size. His size? Question mark. I remember this video. Good looking horse, but I don't know how big he is. Number 91 is an interesting animal, nonetheless. Number 94. Over to number 94, another Uncle Peter. Number 94 is Corazan. Now, this is a brother to a horse we raced against for two years with cruising in style and rarely beat. Maybe never beat. His name was Fourth Dimension. He ended up getting injured after the Hamiltonian, I believe, and is done for the year. But he was a very, very nice horse, fourth dimension. Now there's an Uncle Peter brother or sister called du Tuarez Mi Corazan. My goodness, what a horrible name. This is um, this is the brother to that horse. It raced, recorded at two, recorded in 201 and 2 
in a qualifier. At time of sale, no updates just yet. Um, second dam is okay, third dam okay. Obviously, Magician's down in the fourth dam. That's a long, long way down. So, number 94, Corazan, is a horse that I rather like. The video was nice. The horse is a good-looking horse on video. Page is good. Brother to fourth dimension. Horse that we are going to be looking at, probably. Then, we jump over to number 104. Number 104, if I can get there. 106. 104. Oh, my God, another Uncle Peter. I think I like every Uncle Peter in here, do I? Wow. An Uncle Peter. This is a brother. Uh, Abby Stables put this horse in. I remember this horse's video too. I didn't know how big this horse was also. Size, question mark. This is a brother to a stud in Ohio named Neil. Also, a few other horses in the first dam. Second dam is B. Cortamgo, who threw Tom Kango. Tom Kango was a nice horse. Broadway Hall. A lot of nice horses in this dam in this pedigree. Don't know how big this horse was, but a horse that we are going to be looking at also. Let's go to 125 and see if we can not find an Uncle Peter. A lot of horses circled in here that I took off the list. Number 125. Found one. This is a chestnut filly. Oh my. Chestnut. Chestnut filly by Break the Bank K. This should have some value in it. So... This chestnut filly by Break the Bank K had a very nice video. Has a man of many missions, sister or brother that has not raced yet. It says now too. The mother had won a bunch of fair races, had 13 wins, 118,000 made. The second dam is the dam of Rose Run Flash, 471,000. Norman's Rose, 405. This was the Ohio three-year-old trotter of the year in 2008. That is a decade ago. So, um... This is, this horse did have a nice video, really nice video. Um, from the, this would be the second, two previous foals of Rose Run Marcy, who won $117,000 by train for the future and had 13 wins. So this horse would be what you would call value also, value shopping. The Break the Bank K's are a little off the beaten path for the most part in Ohio now. A chestnut also, not preferred by a ton of people. Then you have a mare who shows a lot of uh, fair stuff and some money in her bank and some wins. Nothing spectacular, but she is a sister to two 400,000 winners, both with marks of 155. So a horse that I might be a little bit interested in if the sun shone on, uh, if the sun shone on, can't break Rosie the right way on sale day. 126. Now, okay, I got another Uncle Peter. I do. This is Aunt Rosemary. Now, Aunt Rosemary, a lot of you have been asking about because Aunt Rosemary is a sister to our Vicka, a filly that we are very fond of. We've been taking our time with her, trying to develop her properly. I think she's got a lot of talent and a lot of, uh, a lot of speed. Um, we've had a second, a third, and a fourth with her in three starts. Nice filly. This is Aunt Rosemary. This is the Uncle Peter's sister to our Vicka, and a lot of people have been interested in Aunt Rosemary, and we are going to go have a look at her. We are going to go have a look at her uh, when we get to the sale. Over to 128. I'm sorry. It's another Uncle Peter. My Lord. Really? I only need seven trot and colts. It must all be done now. Uncle Peter Colt. Handsome Pete from Spring Run Farms. Spring Run Farms. Uh, okay. This is a brother to massive talent. Oh, I know why I like this horse. We had a horse named Stonebridge Rich. He's in the second dam. He was a really nice horse for us. Didn't do anything spectacular. Still only has 77,000. Made in the market 55. He was a pretty decent horse for us, particularly. Then you go down to Stonebridge Zoom. Stonebridge Zoom started off her career well and got injured. She's in this also. Third dam was visualized. He was crazy. Batshit crazy. But he made a quarter of a million and went in 55. Passionate glides in the fourth dam. Lots to like about this page. And I like this horse. Again, a horse I don't know about his size, but a good looking page. Just slip right over. Oh, I'm sorry. Another Uncle Peter Philly. This has got to come to an end. An Uncle Peter. I think I like every Uncle Peter in Ohio this year. Uncle Peter Philly. Petey Sarah from Winterwood. Now, the second, first dam. This is the first foal of a mare who took a mark of 55 by Tagliabu named Maxine the Mighty and $197,000 banked. The second dam is the dam of Sarkozy, who is a nice horse. 
and Maxine the Mighty, who was a nice horse. Ziegler Hanover down in the third dam. Don't need to talk anymore when we get to the fourth dam. This is a horse with uh, a nice video, a decent, an okay to decent page. Another horse that we would be looking at in the sale, number 129. Skip over to 146. 146, a dual eligible colt named Lincoln Tunnel coming from the Hunterton consignment by Man of Many Missions. Now, Hunterton was good to us. They sold us Twinsburg last year, Lawmaker the year before. Steve's a very nice guy. This colt, uh, nothing jumps off the page. Yeah, he's got a Conway Hall brother who made 192,000, went in 54. And another Andover Hall went in 56 and 4. Beer budget, a horse that I remember from my days uh, in earlier stake days in Ontario. And Ellen are both in the second dam. Um, this is a horse has a very nice video, and I believe we can do some business with Man of Many Missions this year. It's his last year in Ohio. He was exported overseas, but I think Uncle Peters are going to take a, uh, the market share, if you will. And this was a big, good-looking, strong colt. And the last big, good-looking, strong colt by Man of Many Missions we bought was a horse with two consonants and one vowel, and his name was Yes. So, Lincoln Tunnel is a horse that I'm pretty interested in when I get... Uh-oh, I have this horse listed as Pacing Colt. This is obviously a trotting colt. When I get to Ohio, we're going to be going to look at Lincoln Tunnel. Number 149. Number 149 is Compass Rose, D.C. This is an Uncle Peter. Okie dokie. An Uncle Peter Philly, who's a sister to the Lima Playmate, Brussels Sprouts, and second. This is this is a decent family also. Nothing really to report other than good video. Again, the Uncle Peter's video very well, obviously, and a decent page. Again, all these Uncle Peter's, all these horses, just remember, we have hard lines on these horses, and some of them are going to be a little bit more than other ones, and that doesn't mean they're any better than other ones. You know, we bought a lot of horses using the model we had last year, value shopping, putting hard lines on horses and sticking to them. We're going to do the same this year. We do have a lot of Uncle Peter's, obviously, on these lists, but that means nothing means very very little it's all about the value number 149 from the Steiner stock farm consignment compass rose DC number 166 all the way over to 166 166 oh, I'm really sorry it's another uncle Peter uh, I, I don't know what to tell you they all video really nice and they got this is the Ohio select sale he's the best sire in Ohio I think so you're gonna have a lot of uncle Peters uncle Peter Philly named burn raid Half sister to Burn Girl made seven hundred thousand by Cash Hall made at one fifty two races. What more can you say? One previous full Burn Girl. This is the second one by Uncle Peter. Nice video, great page. This horse gonna go for a pretty penny, I would imagine. May not be for us, but may actually be for us. We are going to look at one sixty six Burn Raid. Next is one seventy six. Please don't. 176 and it is a rockin amadeus colt and this colt had a really nice video from the winterwood firm consignment bl gunsmoke this is a bay colt by rockin amadeus half brother to georgia pacific savannah splendid this is a, a, an older family and a lot of black print on this page but this colt had a very very nice video a horse that i am interested in looking at also number 182 Number 182 is a Yankee Cruiser filly. Yankee Cruiser filly out of a sister to Malicious. Malicious was a good horse. Now a horse stands in PEI as a, as a stud. Silk Purse is the mare by Better's Delight. Second full at a Silk Purse by Yankee Cruiser. Nice video. Nice looking horse. We're going to take a look at, at Silk Angel. Number 190. Ooh, I took this one off the list. No, I didn't. No. Number 190 is a Wishing Stone, a Wishing Stone Bay Colt out of a mare with 11 wins by Jailhouse Jesse, who was the Ohio two-year-old trotter of the year, trotting filly of the year in 2011, Jessica Rain. This is her first foal. The second dam has a horse in here that I had a long time ago. His name was Cheers to Chip. It's a nice old horse. So, decent family, Wishing Stone, maybe a little off the beaten path, a horse that we are going to be looking at. Number 191, back to the Uncle Peters. We have an Uncle Peter Philly, dual eligible Ohio and Kentucky. Now this is a very interesting horse. This is a Hunterton consignment horse. The first dam through nothing. One horse, 
three wins from one previous fall by Broadway Hall. Now two, nothing special. Second dam is equally as light. Only a couple. One exported internationally. The Trixton now two trying to race. Uh, qualified in 58, New Jersey. The third dam is the dam of Father Patrick. This horse's video was very, very interesting to me, so I decided to put this horse on the list. I don't like looking at nothing back to the third dam, but at the same time as an individual, this horse looked really, really good. Number 192. 192 in your book is also a, an Uncle Peter, only date models. This is a good looking horse. First full by, uh, out of a Muscle Hill mare named Annapolis. Um, Dance Hall Mistress is in the second dam. This is a good looking family and a good looking page number 192. Only date models. All the way up to 225. 225 is a McCardle. A McCardle filly. Cut out of You Thrill Me. Her name is Ultimate Thrill out of the Hickory Lane Horse Farm Consignment. McCardle filly out of, uh, out of this consignment. No, we got... Hunterton was where we got uh, Twinsburg, but I like the video on this filly. She is a sister to McThriller, who made almost a quarter of a million and win 151, and Thrill Seeker, who is racing uh, right now by McCardle. You Thrill Me, once your thing. This is a good family also, lots of black pedigree here, and I like the video on the filly, so it was easy to put her on the list, and that's where she is right now. Number 226, A Man of Many Missions, Colt, Catching Amy, Good looking video on this horse from Midland Acres. Again, looks a little blocky. Typical man of many missions. Back to the third dam, you see Moneymaker. This this family is very prevalent all over the catalogs also. I like this horse. A value play here in number 226. Can't catch Amy. Number 242, reason I'm rushing, my video's running out. I have two minutes. Number 242 is a We Will See Colt out of a first foal, out of a sister to Aquatic Yankee. Fire on the Water did me a lot of good when I was a driver over the about eight, ten years ago, and he is squarely in the second dam. By We Will See, we've had it, we're batting a thousand with We Will Sees and like them, and this horse fits the mold. Value play out of the Springhaven consignment late in the sale. A horse we could get. Number 242, Pacer Racer. Last one on the list, number 246, a Yankee Cruiser Philly. Second dam is a dam of Lucka Michelle, speaks for itself. This is Narina Hanover. I like Narina Hanover. I like her page. I like that she's the third last horse selling. We may be able to afford this horse. Some of these horses are value plays. Some of them aren't. Some are horses that are going to go for a lot of money. If you like anything you heard today, send me an email. If you want to know what my top 10 list is, especially my top one, send me an email. We're looking for investors, partners, clients. Pony up and partner with us in Ohio on Friday. Going to be doing lots of other stuff this week. This is just the beginning. This is the official video of the Ohio Selected Sale. I will be talking to you very soon.